Hey everybody, it's Brian Shannon from alphatrends.net. Today is Friday, June 7th, uh, 2013. Let's take a look at these markets. I think again that the uh, uh, those people who are looking for a top in this market were once again surprised as we did break that first level of support. Coming into this week, we were pretty cautious because we had been below the declining five-day moving average and looking for uh, the possibility and in fact uh, the likelihood that the 50-day moving average would be tested. We did in fact have a test of that rising 50-day moving average on Thursday. Buyers showed up there and uh, the market continued significantly higher here today. So for the week we actually finished with gains in the S&P 500 and that of course uh, that we began the new month. Uh, we are also up uh, month to date and continue to pad those year-to-date gains as well. We'll take a look uh, also today at the uh, the dollar and the bonds. Bonds got hit pretty hard this week as did the US dollar. That didn't seem to matter for the overall indexes but for some certain sectors it did. So let's focus on today's action here in the S&P 500. We came into today thinking that it, the market had the possibility of still being held back uh, below that declining five-day moving average. But what we saw was something we haven't actually seen in a while, which was a gap back above that five-day moving average. And then we saw as the market pulled back initially, I had mentioned to subscribers of uh, in the video in the uh, chat room, that is, that this is a good place to buy uh, the S&P 500 after that with a stop below the low of the day. And as people were asking me for whether we should short it or not, I said, listen, a lot of times on a strong day like this, we see a shakeout midday and then it closes near the high. So it kind of followed the script of what we would be looking for on a day like today. And we did have uh, 2,070 advancers versus just 935 declines today. So again, I think that the uh, the, the bearers are really the ones who are uh, still have something to prove in this market. Now, no doubt that we've gotten a little bit more volatile lately and we just had an intermediate term pullback. Uh, now for next week, I think we'd like to see this five-day moving average hold of support. So perhaps we get a pullback even down towards 163. I wouldn't see that as a bad thing necessarily, but something that might uh, give this market a little bit of uh, uh, ability to refresh and be able to charge higher beyond that 165 level. Below 163, I think we get a little bit more defensive. But the idea is, uh, as I've been saying all year long, we remain in an uptrend. The buyers are in control control. So it's innocent till proven guilty. And just as we've done in the past, when we've had these little breakdowns, we've moved to the sidelines and been cautious. But within the, the, the primary uptrend, we've said that the buyers remain in control and we're looking for reasons to get back involved, not for reasons to call a top. There is no evidence of a top on a daily, on a weekly, on a monthly, on a one minute time frame. We have a market that's uh, you know undergone a little bit of a pullback to a rising 50 day moving average and the buyers remain in control. You can talk all you want about Hindenburg omens, about sequester, about uh, whatever the headline of the day, about the uh, the uh, Japanese yen, the euro, uh, U.S. dollar. Um, and, you know, a lot of people thought that on Thursday that this was going to lead to a big decline in equities. And actually, it was pointed out to me right in here. And that's when the, uh, the S&P 500 really began its move. So if you're going to trade the S&P, be aware of those, uh, uh, you know, dollar moves and that sort of thing. And the interest rates, but trade based on what the S&P 500 is doing. That's the message I consistently bring each and every day. The NASDAQ was up 99 cents today, up 1.3%. We had seen that uh, the uh, NASDAQ, actually, if we take a look at the uh, what's been kind of the upper channel line for this market for most of the year, that resistance held its support on this pullback. So this week's lows are going to be important, along with that 50-day moving average, uh, similar to what we're seeing in here, that this 50-day moving average takes more significance and that 160 level uh, in the S&P 500. But the NASDAQ, you know, we saw a, a really what's looking more and more now like a shakeout in the market. You can complain about the volume all you want, but up 1.3% is uh, up 1.3%. And if you were short being down, uh, you know, low volume, be, losing money does, isn't much of a consolation prize. The uh, NASDAQ uh, broke this little intermediate term downtrend as well. I think that next week we'd still like to see 
see uh, $72.75 uh, $72 to $73 hold as support on a pullback. And we want to see this five-day moving average begin to curl higher again. But we have the same thing here. We have a rising 50-day moving average, and it remains uh, that the buyers are in control. Same goes with the Russell 2000. We briefly broke below, only on an intraday basis, the support we had been watching at about $96.50. And we had a little shakeout below this level and uh, recovered nicely up through it. So uh, what I think we want to see is about 97 now hold as support. If it can do that next week and hold that five-day moving average, then we uh, have to give the benefit of the doubt to the buyers. This is just looking like yet another shakeout within a primary uptrend, which can be seen on the, on the weekly, the monthly, the daily, you name it. Whatever time frame you're looking at, we're in an uptrend in the uh, Russell 2000. The semiconductors were a little bit of reason for concern this week because I was talking about the fact that they broke out on Tuesday and then pulled back quickly. And I, I thought that uh, it was worth noting that we could have a similar situation to what we had seen back in uh, mid-March. That is, from this failed move, uh, breakout came a fast move lower. It's still possible that may occur, but it's going to be uh, still that we give the benefit of the doubt to the buyers as long as we remain above 37.50. As long as we remain above 37.50, overall, the buyers remain in control. In the financials, we had a slight pullback in there, looking like more of a shakeout than anything. The 30-minute time frame, you can see we had broken that support, and it paid to be cautious. We got back above it and continued to add to it today. Now we've got a little bit of resistance at about 20 bucks a share. But next week, I think we want to see probably $19.50 hold as the key level of support. You heard a lot about uh, interest rates lately, and with good reason, because the bonds have been getting murdered. They're from down from you know the TLT, down from about 124 now to 113 So big percentage move for bonds and closed right at the low. So obviously, interest rates are higher, and that's going to affect a lot of uh, interest rate environment uh, 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 sensitive stocks negatively, like the uh, IYR, the Real Estate Index Trust, which has gotten hurt really badly. So it's not that interest rates don't matter. They haven't mattered to the S&P 500. One day they may matter. It makes me think of the old phrase, uh, I think that Marty Zweig made famous, which is three steps and a stumble, meaning that the what you look for is after the Federal Reserve raises interest rates three times, the market usually stumbles. Well, we haven't seen the market raise rates. We haven't seen them do anything other than a bunch of talk about maybe nearing the end of uh, quantitative easing. We haven't see, So we're, we're seeing a rumor-driven market for now and what makes common sense most likely. But if you're not trading the IYR and you're not trading the utility stocks, which are obviously interest rate sensitive, it really doesn't matter a whole bunch to the S&P 500 because, again, for the week, we finished higher. We were up 0.83% in the S&P 500. Uh, and you know the, the dollar was down 2%, the basket of currencies, the UUP really got hurt badly here. So what does the what difference does the dollar make? Well, if you trade the dollar, then it makes a difference. Um, or if you're trading some foreign markets, uh, the, the trends though remain intact. Markets such as gold, it's guilty till proven innocent, still in a downtrend, more likely over the next year to two years, I think, to head down towards 100, 110 than it is to head back up towards even this uh, high near 150. So we have to remember that it's about consistency in the markets. We'll talk about Apple here in a moment, but I want to talk about you know some of the ideas that I bring every day in alpha trends. Yesterday, for instance, I pointed out this OAS. I said, listen, let's get involved in this thing. It looks like it's ready to break out. Let's beat the breakout crowd, though, because we had seen right in here that the stock was starting to show a little bit of strength here yesterday afternoon. We talked about getting involved here with a stop below the low of the day, and it continued nicely higher through today, up at all-time highs. It's not about every single trade working. It's about a consistent approach uh, to the markets based on market structure that says, where is the good where are the good probability setups? Where are the low risk, high potential trades? We spoke about Apple last week, and I thought that Apple really had a, a high likelihood of coming back down towards the 50 day moving average. We touched the 50 day moving average after breaking some important support at about this 442 to 445 level. In fact, if I add to this uh, some volume by price, you can see that this had been an important level. So now we have to look at Apple uh, with all that volume there that now 4 
45, I'd say the intermediate term is still guilty till proven innocent. Um, obviously, there's going to be great day trades in Apple. There's always great day trades in Apple. But overall, from a swing trader's perspective, we're in a downtrend. We have declining five-day moving average. We have this prior support that's looking like it has the potential to act as resistance. And the idea is not necessarily to, to make every move in Apple. Um, it's still in a longer-term decline and guilty till proven innocent. At the best case, as I've been saying, it's starting to neutralize. If they don't scare you out, they'll generally wear you out. So take a free trial to alphatrends.net. We've got a uh, live webinar Monday night where you can get your questions answered live, and uh, we'll take a look at the individual stocks that you're looking at. And uh, I'll share with you some ideas and strategies uh, to help your market uh, participation become and, and profitability become more consistent. Thanks for tuning in, and uh, enjoy your weekend.